let's focus on our workflow and how we navigate our data. From our Assets page in Dreadnoughts, we will find three views. Detail, Thumbnail and List View. In Detail view, we can see all the information on an asset, while Thumbnail gives us a more visual view of each asset with any fields we'd like to add. When we change to the layout, like we've done by adding a field and wrapping text, we'll need to save the page so that everyone on our team can experience the same layout. The blue modified indicates that there are unsafe changes to a layout and that are not permanent until we save the page. If we adjust more ad hoc, but prefer to keep the previous saved layout, we don't have to do anything and the layout will remain this way until we log out and back in again. This means unsaved changes can only be seen by the person who made them. And with unsaved changes, we can always revert to the previously saved layout. Also note that we can choose a view that shows as the default view when visiting the Assets page. In the List view, we can see all the information that we are tracking on each asset. We can drill in further to the Asset Detail pages and see tasks, media, notes and other information. Our artists haven't started work yet, but as soon as they start submitting media with Shotgrid Create, RV or in the browser, we'll see all the media here and can play it back through the browser. Then we will also start to see notes from everyone in the Notes tab. We can navigate through assets via our arrow keys or select from the drop-down to navigate to another asset or asset type. This means we stay within the asset detail pages. We can also navigate to a record using Global Search, which we can activate by pressing Q on our keyboard. On our Shots page, let's group our data by the Sequence field. And then sort by the Cut Order field. This will help give us a more organised look of our shots, which are in cut order for Dreadnoughts. Now save the page so that everyone experiences this. When we're looking for a particular record on a page, we can use the page search to look it up. Heading to our task page, let's explore the filter panel and filter widgets. Filters can be applied in all views and it's how we home in on specific information. For instance, let's expose the assigned to the filter widget and filter for tasks assigned to one person or multiple people. Please hold down the Command key on a Mac or Control key on Windows or Linux when selecting multiple queries at once. This will prevent the page from refreshing until the key is released. To filter out certain information, we can activate Is Not for any filter widget. How can we automate displaying the information we need to see on pages? Shotgrid ships with a few page filters. We can update ones that already exist, duplicate to create similar ones, and create more that suit our workflow needs. Let's create a page filter for shot tasks in Lighting and Comp. Remember to save the page. Now when we visit our page, we have a page filter for information we look up repeatedly. Now that we've learnt the basics for filtering information, let's dive into making things stand out that are important, like tasks that are overdue. By right-clicking on a column header, we can apply a conditional formatting rule for these tasks that can be seen globally across Shotgrid or page-specific like this example. Let's make the task due date field bold with the shade of red 
to alert us that the task is overdue. Then we can save the page. We can also apply similar conditional formatting rules to rows. We've determined that all tasks in the MOM sequence will be reviewed by a group of reviewers. Instead of updating each field manually, we'll filter shop tasks by the MOM sequence. Select all and right-click on the field to assign the group of reviewers. Fast, right? Now that we've learned the basics of navigation, we can apply this knowledge to all other pages and parts of ShotGrid, streamlining our workflows so we work with our team more efficiently.